Hi, I'm Mike Merkovic, a developer at Geotab. In this video on the Dev Channel, I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on the upcoming feature of add-ins for Geotab Drive, our Android and iOS mobile application. Let's get started. You can see on my desktop, I've got a browser open with the Geotab Drive application. This single page application works on multiple platforms, the web, Android, and iOS devices. We're going to learn how to add functionality straight into the Drive app and also leverage the power of the tablet or phone, such as GPS, network and battery status, and notifications. Now let's talk about add-ins. An add-in is a package of web files, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And that add-in is dynamically loaded into the Drive app when a driver logs in. The assets, these files, can be stored on your own server or on a cloud such as Amazon S3 or Google Cloud, but we also let you store it on my Geotab. An add-in has a full API and a life cycle, as well as with a Geotab drive, we now have a mobile interface as well. So first I'm going to show you an add-in that I made to help you visually understand the add-in experience. The first add-in is called Distress and it has a button that the driver can press and hold to notify their dispatch that they're in trouble. I'm going to switch back to Drive, go to Settings, and check for Updates. Now, when I take a look at the menu, I see that there's the Distress and has been added. If I also go check the dashboard, you'll see it as a, as a button here. That button will also have, in future, its own status as well. Now, going to the see distress, click and hold that button for three seconds to alert a manager. So I'm going to do that right now. And a distress email was sent. Here's an example of the distress signal email that would have gone out. This was all done through an add-in and built into the Drive application. Now we're going to go through a second example, which will have a deep dive into the code. We're making an add-in called Navigator, which shows rest stops, restaurants, and gas stations for drivers, and opens a map based on where the Go device is. We'll go back to My Geo tab. We're going to create a new add-in, and here's a JSON structure, JavaScript object notation, with various parameters. You can find out more about this documentation on my.geotab.com slash sdk and look for the developing add-in section. So I'm just going to replace this with an add-in that I've created. So what you can see here is it's named Navigator. There's only one item so far. Items are basically menu items, but it has an icon which is a base64 PNG file could have been a URL to a remote image, but it's just included now. The path here is important because the path here says it's drive app link forward slash, and that means that it'll appear inside the drive app, both on the menu and on the dashboard page. Next, the menu name is navigator, the URL is navigator.html, and there's the rest. Navigator.html doesn't exist yet, so we're going to have to upload it. So I'll go to Files and open up Windows Explorer in the Git project for add-in drive. And here I have three PNGs, a CSS file, and an HTML. And I'll upload all of those into the add-in. Click OK and Save. And I'm going to go to the Drive application, Settings, check for Updates. And then if we go to the menu, you'll see that there's a new add-in that's been added for the Navigator. Again, visiting the dashboard, you'll see that that add-in will be appear as a button here. So now let's go to Navigator. And here you can see there's a list of different items that the driver can pick, so a gas station, a truck stop, or restaurants. 
So now in a browser, when I click on this, it's going to navigate directly to Google Maps. So if I hit restaurants, it's going to look up the restaurants right near where that device is located. So I've switched to the code, and right now we're looking at the add in drive repository from GitHub. And under the Navigator project, we can see the images from that we uploaded to MyGeoTab, as well as the CSS and HTML. And I'm looking inside the HTML right now. We can see it's a full HTML document. So it's the full document object model, or DOM. It's got a head, a title with the name Navigator that'll appear on the page title, as well as a link that points to a relative style sheet that could be a absolute URL that points to another service that you're hosting style sheets or, or JavaScript. You could host jQuery, Angular, those kind of projects. You can reference those within here and they will be inserted into your add-in. Next we've got the body and the body tag is what's actually imported into the add-in and used in the Geotab Drive DOM. So we've got a div here that has all our document content and I've got that minimized now just so you can get a bigger picture of it. Then I have a script tag. So in that script tag, we have the Geotab add-in navigator. So the Geotab add-in is a global object in JavaScript, and you're adding a navigator function to it. That function receives an API and state argument. So the API is similar to the API that you're using in any JavaScript for Geotab. State represents the state of the drive application, what page you're on. Also, it represents some data, so the state of the machine, whether it has a device attached to it, drivers, that kind of thing. Then I have any global variables inside my navigator function. And finally, inside a navigator function, you need to return an object that has three functions, initialize, focus, and blur. Initialize, again, accepts API and state, as well as a callback. And it happens when your add-in gets first accessed. It won't get called again. Right after that callback is called or executed in your method, then focus will be called. So first initialize, then focus. Now if you leave your application, it calls blur. When you come back to your application again, you'll just call focus. So that's the life cycle. And you can read more about that on my.geotab.com slash SDK. So let me expand the initialize because that's the first place it's going to hit. Inside here, I'm using the state to get the device, the go device ID. Now that I have that, I'm making a device status info, which will search to get the device status info, which will have the speed and the position of that device. Right after that, I go API call, very traditional JavaScript API for Geotab, dot get, and we're getting status info, device status info. If we don't get a result, we're going to fall back to just using GPS. Otherwise, we use the device's latitude, longitude, and we make that callback so that the focus method actually gets called. If we don't do that callback, nothing will happen. If the API call fails, then again we fall back on GPS. Now what do I mean by that? Falling back on GPS means we're going to be using the Android or iOS device's location. So using API, we've got a mobile parameter or object that has geolocation, it has speak, and a few other methods that let you interact directly with the device. With geolocation, we're doing a get current position, very similar to HTML5's uh, navigator geolocation, but it, it's uh, an interface that we're, we're providing. And what that'll give you is it'll give you the location. So now you have the location, and you can set that to your current location and make your callback. If it fails, you set current location to nothing and make the callback. So this current location is a global variable up here, and that's going to be used later on in the program. On focus, which happens next after initialize, we add event listeners. Those event listeners are basically the interest elements 
which are on the DOM, and we're assigning a click handler to it. Again, on blur, we just call remove event listeners, so to decrease the amount of connections and memory that's, that's in the add-in. If we go look up at the DOM for a second, we've got an unordered list, which has LIs, which are interest, and so one is a gas station, one is a truck stop, one is restaurants. So for each of those, we've got a click handler. And this data location will get passed in as part of the, the click handler. So we know what the interest is in this interest click. And what we're doing is we're saying if api.mobile.device exists, so if our add-in API can detect that there's a device, so an Android device or iOS, then we can just use the geo scheme and that will open up a native application on Android and, and actually show you Google Maps or whatever program has that as a capability. Otherwise, we're going to use a URL and go straight to HTTPS maps.google.com with the query string parameters of the interest. So it'll look up wherever the device is, either the Go device or the tablet, and query for, say, restaurants. Then we do window location replace. All of a sudden, either the browser window redirects, in this case, or it navigates to the geo scheme. That's it in terms of the code, and so that's what it runs there. We've got some CSS as well, just to make it sort of match and, and fit in with the style. And so now we've got add-ins that work inside GeoTab Drive. I hope this video gets you excited about Drive add-ins with the power and flexibility that it offers. Add-ins are still in beta testing, but are expected to be released in Q4 of 2015. If you'd like to learn more about our SDK, visit my.geotab.com SDK, and you can find the source code of this whole tutorial on github.com slash geotab slash add-in dash drive. Thanks for watching. Wow.